This is Morning Motivation for Educators on the Bee Podcast Network. Learn about all the shows at beepodcastnetwork.com. You'll hear from a variety of formal and informal educators who help put this podcast together. If you'd like to contribute your voice to the show, please go to morningmotivationedu.com to apply. I am Karen Dudek Brannon. I was a school SLP for 14 years where I specialized in language literacy and executive functioning and also held various teaching, leadership, and research roles. Now, I am the host of the De Facto Leaders podcast on the Bee Podcast Network, where I help school therapists, teachers, and administrators be leaders on their school teams, no matter their job title. A lot of people talk about time management, but not as many people talk about time perception. So I wanted to share a little bit about that today, how it impacts our ability to plan, how it impacts how we feel about the things that we do during the day, as well as some cognitive distortions that we all may engage in when it comes to thinking about our day and the activities that we gravitate towards, as well as the activities that we avoid. So our ability to sense time and really gain an understanding of how long things take and really just feel time passing is part of our executive function. So when we think about what five minutes means, for example, we have a number of associations that we might make when we hear that. When someone says, this takes five minutes, there are a couple things that pop into our mind if we have the ability to sense time. So one thing that we might think of when someone says five minutes, you might actually think of the number five. Or if you see the number five, you see that symbol and your brain immediately takes that symbol and makes it mean something. So you might think of something that takes you five minutes. That gives you some context for knowing what that means. Something else that you might think of is that you might see a clock and envision the space on the clock that indicates five minutes. So for example, you might see the space that the minute hand might go through in order to take five minutes on a clock. But if you don't have the ability to sense the passage of time, five minutes, it doesn't really mean as much to you. And so it's hard for you to understand how long that takes. This is why certain kids who avoid tasks or refuse to do work, sometimes they're doing it because the work in front of them seems really overwhelming. You might be able to tell them and say, you know what, it's just going to take five minutes. It's going to be really easy to get through, but that doesn't mean anything to them if they don't have the ability to perceive time and sense time. So five minutes, while to you it might not seem like a lot, and it might be obvious to you that it's going to be so much easier to just get it done, to them, they might avoid it because five minutes could mean the same thing as three hours to them. So it's something that they don't want to do, and it feels really overwhelming. So you explaining five minutes and just using words and even a digital clock might not mean a lot to them. Even if you have well-developed executive functioning skills, we all have the tendency to look at things that we don't want to do and inflate how long they're going to take. So for example, if you have something difficult in front of you and it's probably something that's going to take 20 minutes, then that 20 minutes of time spent doing something that you don't want to do is going to feel a lot heavier and harder than something that is going to take 20 minutes that maybe you enjoy doing. You might not even be thinking about how long it's going to take if you're doing something that you enjoy. You could just keep doing it all day long if you wanted to. So what are some things that we tend to do when it comes to things that we don't like and how can we make sure that we reframe? So a couple of things come to mind here when it comes to perceiving time and helping us move through tasks that might not be the most preferred thing on our to-do list. So something that I notice that I do is that I don't like to respond to emails. And if I see a list of 30 emails that I have to respond to, I might know that that whole task of responding to those emails might take me maybe 10 to 15 minutes, but all I see is a bunch of messages and I see all of those highlighted things in my inbox and I get really overwhelmed. And I get this feeling of anxiety and I almost forget 
how much 15 minutes really means. All I feel is the weight of that task in front of me. So what helps to do for me is that I have to really reframe and think about what 15 minutes means. Is there something else that's super easy that I can compare it to, to show myself that this task in front of me is really not that big of a deal so that I'm not inflating it and making it feel like it's this three, four hour thing when really it's just going to take me 15 minutes. So that is one thing that we can do. And if you have a difficult time, let's say that when you're looking at a digital clock and you see those numbers and it just, it, it seems very abstract to you, what you can actually do is use an analog clock so that you can actually see the space on the clock as you're doing that activity. That's something that might make it a little bit more tangible to you. And that's something that I recommend doing with your students if they are avoiding, inflating, and they are really struggling to understand what five minutes means or what 10 minutes means. A lot of times those digital symbols, again, they require you to take this additional step and really think about space and time because all you're, you're getting is this written symbol. So seeing that visual on the analog clock makes it much more tangible. It's essentially doing that step for you so you don't have to do as much internal processing. So. It's great to do for kids, but if you find yourself distorting certain things, you might want to try it yourself as well. So to summarize, if you find that you have certain tasks on your calendar or on your schedule and you find yourself distorting or inflating or really just, you know, looking at the task and making it seem like it's something bigger than it really is, the first thing that you can do is think about making it more visual for yourself. Would it be helpful for you to look at an analog clock as you're doing this to really just feel that it's not that long? Or would it be helpful for you to think about something else that might take just as long as that task in front of you, but seems to fly by? So for me, checking my email, I pair it to something that's easy so that I make that task in front of me seem less overwhelming. And also what this does is that pairing these activities together and making these comparisons in your mind helps you to build that sense of time perception because you're giving yourself additional context. And this is going to help you be more efficient with your time overall. And also it will help you to reframe those things on your to-do list that you might not look forward to. So it'll help you to go through your day with much more ease and work through some of those things that are inevitably on your to-do list that you can't avoid, but you need to do in order to get through your day. Thanks for listening. And whatever role you have in education, we have a podcast for you at bepodcastnetwork.com. Who among your friends and colleagues needs to hear this message today? Please share it with them right now.